You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Podcast 198. This is a boxing edition to all our boxing fans out there. Once a month, the Sports Coma is going to bring you a one-hour boxing show that will cover all of the top topics in the boxing world. And our boxing expert coming in here tonight is Eddie Too Mean Johnson. Too Mean. Too Mean Johnson in the building. What's going on, my brother? How you doing tonight? All right, how y'all doing? Now tonight, we are, uh, Eddie is our boxing expert. Now we've had Eddie on the show before tonight. I want Eddie, Eddie, kind of into reintroduce yourself to our, to our sports fandom out there. Let the family know uh, your expertise. I know you used to be uh, used to box. Uh, in boxing is a love of yours. Uh, kind of, kind of talk to the family tonight and explain to them uh, your uh, your affiliation with the boxing realm. Oh, yeah, well, I'm just a, a student of the game now. <laughs> See, my days of boxing is over. I still train, but and I, I train other fighters and stuff like that. Right, you got my to... main focus. Go ahead. I'm sorry. A, yeah, student of the game. I like to, you know, what I'm saying, get into the details of fighters and all that. Right, and student. I know, I know you. You got a uh, tied to some really. Uh, great boxers that you knew over a period of time, people like Bruce Seldon and other guys that trained you. Uh, that I remember you was talking about early on uh, that that kind of kind of reared you in the boxing in the boxing sport, right? Yeah, Matthew Shai Muhammad, um, Bruce Seldon. There's a lot of like local fighters from Lang City too. Right, but we like, we appreciate you, man. And uh, Eddie is a good friend of mine, a long friend, a, a, a brother of mine. I consider him a brother of mine. I've been knowing him for many years. I think it's been about twenty years. I had him what 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 twenty uh, something odd years, huh? Something like that, huh? Yep. Yeah, yep. About twenty years. Yeah. About twenty years. I've been knowing Eddie, a good good friend of mine, and it just feels good to be able to bring him into uh to the sports coma, uh, so he can drop that knowledge with the boxing. And today's show, episode 198, the boxing edition of the sports coma, we're going to be talking about some interesting fights that's coming up. In particular, the Terrence Crawford bout that's set to happen this week, next weekend, against Jeff Horn. Now, this is a big fight, of course. We know Terrence Crawford's climbing up in this, in the moving from uh, the junior welterweight situation up into the welterweight situation, going against Jeff Horn. Now, Jeff Horn has a belt that he took from Manny Pacquiao last year. I remember, I know a lot of people remember that. He beat him back uh, in July of 2017 in Australia. And a lot of people yeah, thought that, <laughs> a lot of thought people thought Pacquiao actually won that fight and, and they gave Horn that belt. Uh, I remember me and you was talking about that, Eddie, as well. But Crawford has an opportunity, man, to go up against Jeff Horn. We're going to break down this fight. We're going to talk about this fight, who we think will win, how, how it's going to lay out. Also on the show, we'll talk about Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. We'll give you the latest meat and potatoes on that bout and tell you what's going on with that. Just seemed like a whole bunch of mess going on, and it's really getting tiresome. But we're going to give you the best, go, you know, get cut through all the bulls, the bulls crap and try to get right into the meat of the, the, meat of the matter with that topic. We're also going to talk about Triple G, uh, up next upcoming mandatory fight where you might have to face the Charlo brother. Now, that's going to be an interesting bout. Although we're going to talk about that. Is that something uh, that Triple G want a part of? I know he don't want no part of the Charlos. And the bottom line is we're going to see uh, if Triple G is real as, as, as a lot of people think he is. We're going to, we're going to ask the question, Is has he been tested? 
Has he been tested? That's the question we're going to pose. We're going to answer that question as well. And also toward the back end, we're going to talk about our favorite boxers. We're going to let uh, uh, Fast City uh, to me and Eddie talk about his top five current favorite boxers overall in the boxing division. And then we're going to give his, then he's going to give you his top five all time greatest boxers as well on the show today. Episode 198. Let's get right on to it. We're going to start off Terrence Crawford. Like I said, Crawford. Fight saw he takes uh, a, a chance to face off against Jeff Horn. That's coming up on Saturday, June the 9th. Uh, it's going to be an interesting fight, 930. It's going to be on ESPN for y'all out there that want to know where it's going to be. According to information we got, it's going to be on ESPN, so a lot of people are going to be able to watch the fight. It's scheduled for 930 p.m. that night. And also on the card, they have Jose Pedraza versus Antonio Moran, a 10-round lightweight bout. And uh, it also has other fights as well. Maxim Dasashev against Darlis Perez. Shakur Stevenson versus Alelio Masquea. Steve Nelson against Deshaun Webster. Gabriel Flores Jr. against Dustin Shoshak. And David Kaminsky versus Trevor Laban. Those are the undercard fights as well. Not too much, nothing spectacular happening as, as far as the main event. Eddie, we're going to talk about the Terrence Crawford fight. Of course, I know Terrence Crawford is one of your favorite fighters. He's definitely one of my favorite fighters. I think this kid is the, probably the most complete boxer in the game right now. He's probably the best. I would say consider him to be the best. Uh, I know you're going to give your top five current boxers later on. But this is fight sets up. Uh, he moving up to fight Jeff Horn and wait. What do you think? What do you think the outcome is going to be between this fight with uh, Crawford against Horn? What's your take on it? Uh, he's going to give Jeff Horn a boxing lesson. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he to beat his ass and then probably knock him out. <laughs> give me, a, give, give me a, a, a round what you think he's going to be able to uh, do to him. So you, you let me let, let me ask you this, though, Eddie. You think, uh, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a boxing lesson, le- lessons of supreme talent. I know you made the observation about him being rusty and his recent um, – sparring sessions, he being Jeff Horn. It was kind of sketchy how he got the belt last year from Manny Pacquiao. So Mm -hmm. people was kind of questioning that now. But so you're saying that uh, this this won't be much of a fight in your opinion? I mean, he, he, when he was in, uh, the reason why I think he got the belt because they fought in his hometown, man. Uh He didn't beat Pacquiao, man. I say he's real rough and he's tough and all that, taking too much punishment, which ain't a good thing anyway. I'm saying taking too much punishment like he was. Right. You know I'm saying? Your career don't last long like that. Okay, but they gave it to him the fact that he took a, a good kicking and kept on, a, 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 a good uh, whooping and kept on kicking, right? <laughs> Whatever how they say it. <laughs> but he was basically blocking all that shit with his face. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, Terrence Crawford. You know, so I'm, I'm I'm quite sure he knows that his people, his trainers and stuff, know that he's gonna he's a real rough and um like dirty fighter. So they're gonna probably box him, weigh him down, in about like the second half of the fight after the sixth, seventh, eighth round. I think they're gonna start um trying to set up the knockout. Okay, so you, you you're saying I, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, they'll have him so frustrated and stuff like that because he ain't gonna be really hitting, and you know what I'm saying and he'll start doing a lot of reaching in, and that's when he'll start landing the big bombs on him. That's interesting. Start- that's interesting, bro, because you know they've been beefing Jeff Horn up for a while now. I mean, they've been really pushing Jeff Horn to be the future of uh, the welterweight division and all this kind of madness. But you know, he might be a decent fighter to some, but even though Crawford's moving up to fight him, moving from junior welter up to the welterweight, uh, I mean, this is a good strategy and for, as far as I'm concerned, as far as Crawford's concerned. I, I agree with you. I don't think you'll be able to – Horn is not going to be able to touch Crawford. And, I, and, I, and, and uh, you know how Crawford is, how he good at frustrating people, you know, how he is. He, he does the little tricks and everything. I think he'll get inside Horn head and pop him whatever he wants to. And uh, I think – and it, it, this is going to be pretty much, it's going to be a pretty easy, easy fight. I hate to say easy, but I don't see Crawford having much difficulty against Jeff Horn in this fight. 
I mean, like you say, you you never know what happens in there. But by, by the fact that uh, Jeff Horn's a dirty fighter, mm-hmm. he might you know, say you never know what can happen. He can headbutt him, get cut. And that can change the fight. True. So I think yeah, uh, Crawford's best bet is to box and be cautious. Not because if Jeff Horn can really hurt him or nothing like that, but if them head butts and stuff ain't no joke, man. Right. So I'm saying, you, you, if you get cut or get swelled up, you know, so that can change the outcome of the fight. But, you know what I'm saying, you just fight cautiously. But, you know what I'm saying, at the same time, punishing him, you know what I'm saying, to wear him down for the second half of the fight and just knock him out. I think you're right, man. When you, you, That's true. You got to be very cautious behind. He does have the reputation as being a, 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 a dirty fighter. That's true indeed. You know, but Charles Crawford, man, tell me that uh, Crawford hadn't seen it all. You know what I'm saying? It, I mean, he's the guy that's seen it, seen it all. You know, had, he, he's a terrific champion. You know, he has multiple belts. Of course, he dominated the class that he was in. He moving up in weight to to take on Horn. And I'm pretty sure he's aware of the, the type of dirty techniques Horn, because that's what Horn's going to have to rely on, because he damn sure can't out uh he won't be able to outbox Crawford. He's not faster than Crawford. And if he does, and if there even is an advantage of Cohen having a power advantage, he still at some point is going to be able to have to cut off the ring to be able to land some of his power punches on Crawford, which I don't think that'll happen. So in the end, you know, like you were saying, besides the extracurricular stuff that might happen with him on the dirty end of things, I don't see this. I just see this guy as a speed bump McGee. You know, just the guy that, that, that he's going to knock down on the way to get another title. Yeah, you know what? Um, Jeff Horn, only way if he, he can win it is to do the rough tactics, man. Right. That's the only way he has a chance to win it. But Terrence Crawford is a rough dude, too, man. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's a, he's a real rough dude, man. So, you know, so that, like I said, that's Jeff Horn. Only, that's the only way he can win the fight is to be real rough. And um, elbows and head butts and all that type of stuff. Hopefully, to try to uh, frustrate Terrence Crawford to get him off his game. But I don't think he, I think uh, Terrence Crawford is mentally tough to um, to endure that. All right. All or right. He, might, he might yeah he might get mean and then and start landing some shit on Jeff Horn and knock him out early, man. Right. Right. That's a possibility yeah. as That's well. Different. But That's you're, the type of dude that Terrence Crawford is, man. He, but you're, you're anticipating he, round number eight, you say, with a knockout, correct? Yeah, I think with, within 10 rounds, he, he, he'll um, he, he'll be able to wear him out. He, he'll knock him out within 10 rounds, I think. All right, well, there it is. And it says uh, he'll dispatch Jeff Horn uh, within uh, 10 rounds, and I agree with him, man. I don't think Horn going to have much. Uh, he gonna take his, he gonna take the sound right out of that horn. But anyway, we about to go into our first break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we're gonna talk about some more boxing news. This is our total one hour boxing edition. We're gonna talk about Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua latest on the other side of the break, among other boxing news. Stay with us. You listen to the sports call. We'll pick you and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. I'm talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www 
thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash I dash view. Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition cover athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was the NBA 2K Legend cover athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup, every incredible shot, every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Home on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Wilder and Anthony Joshua, the latest news and crap going on with those two guys. And of course, the latest information we have to give to you guys is the fact that Eddie Hearn, which is the promoter for Anthony Joshua, is basically issued Deontay Wilder an ultimatum for the fight. And basically, it's getting close because remember, um, some time ago, maybe about a month or so ago after the fight, uh, Alexander Plavatkin, the Russian heavyweight, is a mandatory fight from one of the belts, and he's the next up to fight Anthony Joshua uh, for the belt. But, of course, if you don't know, unification trumps mandatory, so Deontay Wilder is given the first option to be able to fight, um, uh, you know, to fight with the Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. That's the, the fight that everybody wants to see uh, right now. But according to the information that's coming out uh, from CBS and from other sources is saying that Hearn is willing to accept an offer from Joshua to face uh, mandatory opponent Alexander Slovakian. They can't seem to get nowhere. Now, if they did, from what I got some information about, they did work out the money. But then the venue became a issue, whether or not they were going to fight in Europe or fight in the, in, in the States. So the bottom line is it's, it's, they, it's fighting every which way between the venues. At first it was the money. And it's quite obvious that Hearn and... Uh, I forget the, the, that uh, Deontay Wilder's uh, manager, which is uh, Finkel and, and a few other guys, those guys are, are are basically, you know, they don't like each other. And that makes it difficult, man, to be honest with you, because people don't care about the goddamn managers. If you don't like each other, get your ass in the ring and y'all two fight it out. But the bottom line, let's get these two guys in the ring and let's make it happen. That's the frustrating part about it because um, sooner or later they're going to have to fight. But it, it appears that Alexander Plavatkin, which I've said in previous podcasts, that I don't think Andy Joshua won't know part of Alexander Plavatkin. Bottom line, no no doubt about it. You do better, you fight Deontay Wilder. Uh, at least you gain a belt. You fight in Alexander Plavatkin, you, you you could potentially lose your belt. You don't have nothing. In, and Plavatkin's no buster. He's no joke. You know this this guy is is, is very is, a, is he's very tough. You know, but any problems knocking out taller fighters? You know, he's a small fighter, but he is a pit bull. He's a bulldog, like I said before. So Eddie, looking at this fight and the particulars behind it, looking at Anthony Joshua in the fight, they keep saying the same thing that is either uh, Deontay Wilder is Alexander Plavatkin. Uh, everybody wants to see the Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua fight because it's two heavyweight champions. That's the first time in a long time that we'll be able to see a unification bout between heavyweights. 
events happen, either it be Wilder or it be Joshua, depending on what side of the fence you fall. Uh, what's your taking, what's your thinking on this, all this stuff going on with Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua? Um, if they, let's just look at it like this. What's your take on it as, as a stance between the managers and, you know, and the difficulty in making a fight? What, you know, what, what's your think? What's your, th- what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? It's the A and B side. Anthony Joshua is the A side. And um, Deontay Wilder is the B side. And really, you have to bend down. You you have to su- submit to the um, A side. They they really dictate where the fight's supposed to be and who's getting what as far as the person, you know what I'm saying, concerned. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Anthony Joshua, you know what I'm saying? He's the A side, so he wants to fight in London, you know what I'm saying, as a. Uh, Show appreciation for the fans that have been supporting him over there. You know, say which is right. You know, what I'm saying, but uh, Dante Wilder wants it over here, but he's not the A side, so he can't really call no shot. <laughs> I think that's the problem with um with the uh, managers. They don't want to the, the, uh, the B side don't want to submit to what the A side's laying down, man. Right. I think that's the whole hold up. But Dante Wilder he can't. He can't really make no demands. He he don't. You know what I'm saying Anthony Joshua got most of the belt, so he's the A side. You got to, you know what I'm saying whether you like it or not, you got to do what the A side says. Then when you become the A side, then you be, then you can do the same thing, man. He's got to respect. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect the A side, man. I agree with that's you. That's the man. whole. Issue. That's the whole issue right there, man. I agree with you, Eddie. Anthony Joshua has be four like heavyweight that. titles, and Deontay Wilder has one. Mm-hmm. That's how I go, man. It's like what uh, Mayweather when he fought um, De La Hoya. You know what I'm saying? What they they uh, the A side chooses the gloves, everything, the ref. The, you know what I'm saying? Everything, man. Like like Mayweather, he ain't had no problem. He said, "Okay, we just fight." Yes, you know but when he became an A side, you know what I'm saying? He did the same thing, man. That's only fair, man. I see that. I, yeah. I agree with you on that. I, I see that's exactly the issue. Deontay Wilder wants to fight in America. Of course, then it was a compliment that Hearn said about, and a lot of people don't like Hearn because they see him as being a little bit cocky and arrogant, but it's true. They offered uh, Deontay Wilder money, more money than he made uh, than his previous fights. He doubled up his money, uh, du- over doubled it. Matter of fact, he did a little bit more than double. He also uh, spoke about why did not even using the belt. Eddie. He was talking about the fact that how Joshua draws more than Wilder mm-hmm. does. He drawn fifty to eighty thousand people to watch him fight in in arenas and stadiums full of people. Eighty he's, he's a huge boxing draw. Eighty fifty to eighty thousand people every fight versus Deontay Wilder's fifteen to twenty thousand, you know, in America. One belt. Of course we know that Anthony Joshua is twenty what had twenty twenty one fights, you know, versus double what Deontay Wilder did, forty forty fights. But at the end of the day, right. it's still the, the the celebrity status or the name draw is falling with the guy who's who has the twenty fights. I mean, this man is he has four belts, and he's he's calling all the shots. And I don't understand what's the problem with these these uh, greedy promoters. I ain't gonna call them greedy, you know. But you got Shelly Finkel and um and his team on one side uh, calling out Hearns and 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 sitting and, and issuing ultimatums. I don't know what kind of power what kind of advantage they think they have on the side by trying to draw him out like that but in the end he could just say you know what screw that i can i'll go flight fight uh plavodkin for all that which mm-hmm. is obviously the the plan b uh of what if they get uh pissed off about it because they have a timeline they have to get this fight done by if they don't get it done by a certain period of time then you know the boxing organization is going to command the fight to get made or he'll lose one of those belts, and we know Anthony Joshua does not want to lose a belt right now at this stage of his career. Mm-hmm. So that'll mess the whole Dante Wilder unification fight up if he's to lose a belt. So, yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anthony Joshua just got to hum- humble himself, man. Like, right? okay, he's a he's an A side. I respect that, and go ahead and take it from. Him. And they put it, like, you know, so you can put the, the uh, rematch clause in it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you the A-side if you win it. And you can bring the fight over here, man. 
But look, he's a, you know, say so he's the A side. Just respect that and, and go over there and take it from him. Just like um, uh, what's the, the brother's name from Texas? And he fought out uh, Kel Brook over there. Uh, uh, Errol Spence. He went right. over there and took the stuff from him. He said, okay, he, and um, Kel Brook was the A side, so he like, okay, I, I'll go over there. He got focused and he went over there and took that shit from him. You know what I'm saying the same scenario. Anthony, uh, Dante Wilder got to go over there and take the shit from him. He won it. That's what it comes that, down to. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying you're going to get less money. I mean, I'm, 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 I know they try to get as much as money as possible, negotiating how they're doing it. But I was like, hey, you're going to get less money regardless, man. He he got he's the A side. He get the most money. Go over there and take it so next time in the rematch, Paul, you get the most money. Simple as that, man. As simple as that. I mean, that, that's common sense right there, and I think that that's what, what it should be. Because if you look at it, like you're saying, they already have a plan B set up if it don't work. They probably won't make as much money, but it'll probably be a better – it'll be a similar fight. won't be as good, I don't think, as action-packed. It will be with Deontay Wilder. But Alexander Plavakin a guy. Uh, he's a WBA mandatory challenger. And if they don't get things done, they're under the timeline. If they don't get anything done with Deontay Wilder's people, then they'll move on to Blavodkin, and they'll have to do it. Now, according to Eddie Hearns, he's quoted as saying, quote, they have our, they have our offer, so if they have to accept it or move on, it's not a case of if you don't accept this offer, the fight is dead. We'll just fight Blavodkin and carry on our negotiations to the next one. That's what Eddie Hearns said, end quote. So, obviously, they, they, they have a fighter – a mandatory challenger behind them. So this is set to happen in September. So they want to have something to go for around September, a fight, whether it be Deontay Wilder or Alexander Plavodkin. Only time will tell because who knows? They might get close to the line and, and agree because Deontay Wilder's like Eddie says, and that, that was really uh, what it is. is Deontay Wilder and them bottom line is uh, just trying to get milk as much money out of the uh, the negotiations as they possibly can. And, and it, when it comes down to it, if I was Deontay Wilder, I would step in and say, listen, stop this nonsense. Let's make the fight happen. If I'm that confident that I can beat this guy and I talk all that mess and I can beat that man and take his belts, so let's line the fight up. I'll whoop this guy's ass. I'll take his belts. I'll fight him over there. I'll fight him under the bottom of the ocean if you want to. We'll fight there. I'll take your belts from you. And then when the next time come around, like you astutely mentioned, that then you'll have to come to America to fight me because I'll become the unified heavyweight champion. And uh, that'll be the first time a, a heavyweight from a from the United States unified the belt since Mike Tyson, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Ed? Uh, Lennox Lewis. Right. But I'm some of the American fighters. I know he was oh, in yeah. Canada, but uh, America. But I know he was from Europe, but I know he was, I think he was claiming Canada for for a period of time, but American fighters, oh, yeah, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think the last dude to do it was Mike Tyson. So that's pretty good rarefied error to be in. You know what, Eddie, we got a few minutes before, before the break. Talk to me quickly. Tell me what you're thinking about uh, what kind of fighter Deontay Wilder is to you. What kind of fighter he is to you? He, he's, a, he, he's a fighter that, that, you know what I'm saying, he, he has a lot more He he, he has a lot more improvement to do, which I've seen him do, man. Let's say looking at his last training sessions and stuff like that, he, he's really, he looking real good. <laughs> you know what okay. I'm saying? He's hooking up the jab better. And you know what I'm saying? He he's making that a surprising right hand now. Okay. Where you can't really see it coming and those are the ones that really hurt you now. And you don't see it coming. So he 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 he's learning how to um to set that right hand up a lot better now. And he's keeping his balance a lot better from what I've seen. You know what I'm saying? Before he'd be all off balance when he throw and um he'd be real wild and stuff. But he seemed like he's like he's like he's becoming more of a better, like, boxer and stuff now. But, you know what I'm saying, as far as his balance and, and, you know what I'm saying, hooking off that jab, like, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of the great heavyweights are known for able to hook off that jab. You know what I'm saying? So he's getting he good, man. Well, I've seen some footage of him, too, training that, uh, he, he, you know, he's definitely looking a lot sharper, man, you know, to say. But the man's had 40 fights. You know, he had a little amateur career, too. He won the bronze medal, I think, back in the Olympics some time ago before he started his professional career. Uh, 
40 fights into it, 39 knockouts. He finally got a belt. I think he's been holding the belt for a number of, for a few years now. Uh, he got an opportunity for a really big payday to really do something here with a guy like um, Anthony Joshua, who a lot of people think Anthony Joshua is going to be Deontay Wilder. They see him as more of a complete fighter. But in the end, I think Deontay Wilder has an opportunity, man. Just just stop the just getting there and tell them goddamn managers, listen, get out the way. It's time for this fight to happen. We need to get this fight done. We need to make it happen. ASAP. Um, because you never know what might happen after this. You know what I'm saying? You might, if you have an opportunity to unify the belt, don't let the mandatory come up on you and steal that opportunity. Whatever you got to do, you got the man's attention right now. You negotiate and get, the, get it done as soon as possible. Get them greedy people out the way. Get the fight on. Because in the end, if you're confident and you really think that you can beat Joshua in Europe, beat him and you become an international superstar. Bottom line. Bottom line, beat them, beat them, knock them out, do what you got to do. And that puts you on a whole nother plateau. Uh, final thoughts, Eddie, before we hit the break. You can take all his fans, too. If he will. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make a name for himself, because no doubt about it. A few people know about Andy Joshua in the States, but no doubt about it, man. He's an international phenom. No doubt about it. So, uh, he can... If Deontay Wilder knocks him out, that'll be something. But uh, this is more of an opportunity for Wilder than it is for Joshua, to be honest with you. Because sooner or later, you know, he's a younger fighter. You'll get an opportunity to take to get that belt one way or the other. So Deontay Wilder, you're really on the clock with this. But anyway, we that'll do it on the talk about Wilder and Joshua. When we come back, we'll talk about Triple G. And if he really been tested these upcoming fights, Eddie, if he off on that, we'll also talk about our top five current and past boxes on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Sports Coma Boxing Edition. Stick with us. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artists. Check out the Crown They Ass World Podcast, covering all the news and issues that affect you and the ones you care about, only on the PRO Media Network. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guy. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. And we're talking boxing, man. It's the boxing edition on episode 198. Now, um, before we get back to our boxing, just want to uh, give a shout out to all the fantastic supporters that we have across the Sports Coma Nation, Sports Coma family. Big ups to you guys for, for supporting the platform at the PRO Media Network. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate your donations. We appreciate you, appreciate you sharing the show. And we'd like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts by continuing to give you quality content pro, uh, programming for your entertainment pleasures. Now, moving ahead, uh, we also want to talk about uh, you guys joining the 
the Sports Coma Facebook and Twitter pages for all the latest information on football, basketball, boxing, and all the favorite things that you like to follow. While I search for it, now you can just subscribe to our Twitter and Facebook pages and get it all the time, every day. Also, please go to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network to donate the support to build to help us further build the platform. Now, getting back into the boxing talk, this segment we're going to hit you with the Triple G talk. Of course, Triple G just dispatched his fight right here. I ain't going to even mention the guy's name, man. It was such a terrible fight and wasn't very not interesting fight. The guy don't even deserve to be mentioned in the fight, but he just beat up a guy and knocked him out. And the the talk on the board is, is Triple G. He's holding the multiple belts, a bunch of belts. Is Triple G really who he says he is? Of course, uh, we have a, a situation lining up where he might have to fight Jamal Charlo, you know. And, of course, Jamal Charlo uh, is one uh, one half of the, the great Charlo boxing brothers who are ex- absolutely spectacular boxers and fighters, many excellent fighters. But Charlo, uh, Jamal, who, in my opinion, is the best of the Charlo brothers, uh, is has some thoughts on Golotkin and about uh, whether or not uh, you know, uh, a potential matchup. Now, of course, we, we spoke about it. I'm going to let Eddie give his commentary on it. But, but this is what Charlo said when talking about uh, Triple G. They said he won't fight. They said, quote, they said he want to fight me, but he really don't want to fight me. I mean, you see the comments that his trainer and those guys are making? It's not giving me hope. I'm here, though. Like I said, I'm the interim champion. He don't fight me. I move up to the belt, then I call the shot. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the game. I'm going to go and get him. It's not going to be a waiting game when you see me at the top, end quote. That's Charlo. That's Jamal Charlo, man. And that's as confident as it gets. And believe me, Jamal Charlo can back it up. He's not scared of Triple G or his belts. He wants a clear shot at him. Now, Eddie, now we talk, we, we know about Triple G's record. We know about Triple G's history, where he comes from. We know uh, the fights. But talk to me. This is the question that I want to pose to you. Is Triple G been tested? Has he really fought a guy of, uh, of, the, of the personage of one Jamal Charlo, a really good fighter that's going to really test his boxing acumen? We know about uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez. We know that's a huge fight. We know about that. But talk to me. Do you think Triple G has has been tested up to this point? Nope. In my opinion, no. Because anybody, the person that was that would have tested him and proved that he, you know, what I'm saying that he's worthy, a worthy champion was uh, Andre Ward, and that fight never happened. He avoided that fight, man. Mm-hmm. So I don't respect no dudes to do that. Like somebody that you that said you want to show and prove by fighting the best. Andre Ward was the best, and that that fight never happened because they knew Andre Ward was gonna <laughs> he was gonna whoop that ass, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and all them endorsements he got now, and, you know what I'm saying? He wouldn't have had all that if he lost to Andre Ward. So that's why they avoided him. Man. They knew he was gonna lose that fight, but he hasn't been tested, as far as I'm concerned. Well, you, it, you, I mean, I, yeah, he beat everybody that was in front. I respect that, but. Like I said, I don't respect that he he haven't fought the best when the opportunity presented itself. And he, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they avoided that, man. I don't respect that. Well, let me ask you, uh, pose the question, devil advocate for a, seven, for a second. What if you have, because they got a lot of Canelo Alvarez fans out there that like boxing that's listening to the show right now. Uh, what would you, what would your response be for those people that say, well, hey, man, he he didn't run away from Canelo Alvarez, and Canelo Alvarez is a serious fight out there, a guy that can really hit, uh, who, who got champion qual- uh, caliber. He didn't run from him. So what's your taking on uh, uh, your thoughts on somebody yeah, he that didn't was run. He didn't run, but um, Canelo beat him. In my opinion, Canelo beat that. He won that fight. Man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He won. Canelo won that fight, in my opinion. A lot of people agree with you. Yeah, he took he took um everything that um Canelo threw at him, but Canelo took everything he threw at his, um Triple G threw at him. And Canelo coming up from welterweight. Right. Triple G is a natural middleweight. And he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't even uh, rock um um Canelo with none of them punches. And that's what they 
watched a big um, triple G up on it. It's just power and his determination and all that. But it didn't work against Canelo, man. He couldn't break Canelo. Canelo boxed with any slug with him. You know what I'm saying? He he won that fight, man. That's interesting, Eddie, because um, a lot of people agree with you about that fight that uh, Canelo Alvarez beat Triple G um, in the fight, and uh, they basically gave Triple G the belt. Um, of course, the next time around, they had an opportunity to fight again. They had an opportunity to fight again, and of course, Alvarez got caught up in a doping scandal uh, this time around. So uh, when they come down to it, I, I, he took the, the next fight with this other guy, and of course, I have to mention the fact that he had Billy Joe Saunders that he talked to in the fight. He had an opportunity to get Spike O'Sullivan there. You know, um, there was quite a few fighters that were lined up to fight him for whatever reason, money or time or whatever that was it. He decided to go the route that he decided to go. But a lot of people that rub people a wrong way that he chose that particular fighter to fight. And like I said, I'm not going to mention the man's name because it was a disgraceful fight in my opinion. Uh, and I'm not gonna get that guy no pub because uh, he could have. I mean, it was that was just it was just a sad ordeal where it went from to that. That was just totally ridiculous. But anyway, you know, I just thought that he could have picked a better opponent, uh, saying that he he had tell Canelo Alvarez out of the way. He had plenty of time to pick. I would have respected if he had got Billy Joe Saunders up there. Yeah, I <laughs> right, right. He'd be cautious because he, you don't see him want to mess up that Canelo rematch money. But the walls are closing in on his ass now. <laughs> so he, he got to fight with him. He got to fight the mandatory, which is uh, Charlo and uh, Danny Jacobs again. Mm-hmm. Okay. But now he's going to have to get that belt took him. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? And um, I, like I said, he, it's like, if he fights Jermaine, Jamel, Jamal, what's his name, Jamal Charlo or Jamel? Jamal. Jamel Charlo. Jamal Charlo. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be like they gonna they, he ain't try to get in that lion's den, man. <laughs> he, he gonna go in the. He, you know what I'm saying? If he fight Charlo, he, his ass gonna get thrown in the lion cage. But he ain't got no weapons. <laughs> That's what they're looking at. They're looking yeah, at that, Eddie, because I hear Charlo's, Charlo's gonna eat him up, man. Bottom line. Well, you know Charlo. You know, you talk about punching power. I don't know. You could say what they, as far as Triple G and uh, Jamal Charlo's punching power, might be what and what, but no doubt about it. I mean, you, you get your estimation on that. Might be what and what as far as the punching power is concerned, because Triple G can hit. But as far as the speed concerned, that's told. That's told to Jamal Charlo. I mean, he can dance around uh, Triple G um, yeah, in, in that fight. He got that bazooka like jab, man. Mm-hmm. He could be. He could be a dude with just his jab. He had him all night and win that thing without um, Triple D even getting close to him. That's true. That's how That's powerful true. the jab is. But I, I, I know he ain't going to just use the jab. He's going to use that right hand, too. Oh, yeah, he's going to daze him. He's going he gonna, to, if, if Triple G, but, but a lot of people don't think uh, that that fight's going to be made, obviously, from the comments I read, read directly from Jamal Charlo's mouth about Triple G saying that they don't, Triple G don't want to see me. His people are keeping him away from me for obvious reasons. But they asked him also who is his top on his top five list of guys that he want to fight. And, of course, guess who it is? Guys that you mentioned, Jacobs, Saunders, you know, uh, Jamie uh, Mungaya, you know, guys like that. Um, you know, they, he, those are really good fighters. So, obviously, Jamal Charlo is when he when he finally seizes the belt because he's going to take the belt one way or the other. Either the fact that either he's going to get like you said the walls are closing in, either he's going to give him his opportunity for the mandatory, or the boxing organization going to re, just just re, take the belt and he'll have, fight for a vacant title. I mean, one way or the other, Charlo is going to get that fight. Now, of course, Triple G. Wouldn't it be beautiful that Char- Jamal Charlo gets to fight against Triple G? He gets all of Triple G's belt. Wouldn't that be awesome for Charlo to have that mark? And then I'm pretty sure he's not going to be like these other runaway guys to get the belt and want to sit there and fight bums or not too good fighters. He's talking about fighting the top fighters in the in, in that division. Okay, that's how you're supposed to do it as a champ, man. You know, so you fight all the top guys like when Tyson was undisputed champ. He fought all the, the, the number, number one contenders. Of the top three, he fought them. All of them. He gave all of them a shot, man. 
And that's what he's supposed to do as champ. He's a, he's a champ. You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to give him, he's supposed to give people opportunity and win their belt. Well, they're saying that, boy, but, they're yeah. saying that the fight between, uh, Carnello and Triple G is looking unlikely for this for the end of this year, so he might not have a, a choice but to line up a fight with Jamal Charlo. You know, but mm-hmm. I, like you said, I won't hold my breath for breath for that fight. I would love to see that fight to see what Triple G yeah. could do with a guy like Jamal Charlo because I, I don't think he ever fought somebody with his talent. Nah, he, like you said, <laughs> he's avoiding him for a reason. Man. Oh yeah, and, and at the same time he's trying to make it seem like he's not avoiding him, like he don't he don't earn that shot yet. Yeah, I'm like, man, earned the title, man. No doubt, he de- definitely earned the shot. It'll be over for him. Right. Right. He's gonna lose, man. No doubt about it. It's definitely a loss. Yeah, he's gonna lose. We about to go in. They are future of boxing, man. No doubt. We about to go into our break here. We finished talking about the Triple G topic. When we come back on the other side of the break, we're gonna have Eddie to give his comments on who's the top five boxers of all time and the top five boxers of today. We'll have that information on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guys intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Clear, clean, great-tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. Follow the Sports Coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. The best fucking sports podcast in the country. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. We got Eddie joining us, man, our boxing expert. We're talking boxing in this special edition podcast 198, our special boxing edition. Like I said, man, we every once a month we'll be bringing to you from the Sports Coma one hour of solid boxing talk about the latest boxing news and topics that's out there in the boxing world. And of course, uh, we got our boxing expert chiming in, Eddie Two Mean Johnson. And uh, in this segment, the final segment of the show, we're going to be covering the top five boxers of all time and the top five current boxers of today. We're going to run that down and let Eddie give you his take on who he thinks or some of the top five boxes of today and of yesteryear. And uh, getting right into it, Eddie, we talked about this uh, off break, my brother, about some of the some of some of your favorite fighters. But you know, we talked about some of the top five current boxers in the game. And of course, we go back, we get an opportunity to talk about some of the past guys. Of course, there's so many to name. I mean, you got guys like, of course, the ever the ever present, ever 
great Muhammad Ali, I always jumps up there. You got guys like Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, um, Joe Lewis, even Jack Johnson. Something we'll go back way back and talk about Jack Johnson. You know, and some of those great fighters and boxers uh, of of yesteryear. But when we bring it to today, my brother, and we talk about today, and uh, we're gonna go back and talk about the past. But first, let's keep it real about today. In your opinion, and based upon who you've been observing and watching in today's fight game, give me your top five boxers who um, who you think are really ringing out today's game. Well, my top five is Pan uh, is number one. Um, the Charlo brothers, Errol Spence, um, uh, Gary Russell Jr. Okay. Yeah. I like those dudes, man. They, they like the future of boxing, I think. Those are really good fighters, man. Those are really oh, good yeah. fighters. You're talking about Crawford. In my opinion, Crawford's the best in the business right now. Uh, he takes he takes Mayweather's position pretty easy. That's, and, and you talk about Mayweather. That's a dude right there that uh, very few people could walk in those shoes. But Terrence Crawford, man, when he when finally when Mayweather got out the way, uh, and retired, and you got a guy like Terrence Crawford. I mean, you can't get close to perfection as what Terrence Crawford is. I mean, he's obviously uh, got to be. If you know anything about the fight game, people out there, that Crawford's obviously got to be the type man. I like the Charlo guys. I, I really do. I, I hope they get more of an opportunity to show themselves as champions, and I see that. Errol Spence is another great fighter. And who was the last one you said, the last fighter? Jerry Russell. Jerry Russell. Oh, that's another yeah. that's another really solid fighter right there. So those are really terrific fighters right there. I agree with uh, uh I, like like, I like Dante Wilder too though. And Anthony Joshua. You like so, I I wasn't aware that you like Anthony Joshua. I thought uh, I I didn't know what what do you like about Anthony Joshua? What what's what's his what's, what you liking about him? His image is good for boxing, man. Okay. I'm saying him being a I'm saying um, a people person. So he's, you know, so he's learning to be a more people person. You know, like like Muhammad Ali and how they work the crowd and stuff right now. But you know I'm saying people love him. You know I'm saying because he, you know, what I'm saying he's muscular and he got a smile. And a lot of <laughs> women like him because he's handsome and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so. Yeah, so. But outside the image, <laughs> what you think about yeah. his? But what outside his image? To, uh, what about his skill set? I mean, do you do you think that he got the makings to be a, a greatest? I, I remember what Mike Tyson said about about Anthony Joshua gave him nothing but love, you know. But what's your perception on Anthony Joshua? I mean, could he really end up being like one of the greatest fighters that we talked about? I know, you know, he you talk about guys like Lennox Lewis from the other side of the pine. Big heavyweights. I mean, big guys. Lennox Lewis, in my opinion, was the greatest big fighter that there was. I mean, he stood what six six, six five, six six, yeah, and it, to me, he was the greatest big fighter of all time. You know, I'm partial to guys like uh, Big Daddy uh, Riddick Bo. You know, what I'm saying, and guys like that. But at the end of the day, I have to say that this man here, uh, Lennox Lewis, to me, is the greatest big fighter that ever ever fought. What you think about Andy Joshua and those, and and based upon what you see from him, uh, could he be? Could he end up in that echelon of a great big heavyweights? I don't know because, like I say, the heavyweight division ain't the same like it used to be. Mm -hmm. it, it, like I say, you had uh, when Lennox Lewis was fight, you had great fighters like Holyfield, Bo, Tyson. Actually, they were a, a different breed of heavyweights back then, man. You know, see, it was a lot of great heavyweights then, but now it's like you only got like a handful of. Them. What heavyweights you like in today's world, Daddy? What, what's some of the guys? I know you talk about uh about um Big Baby, Jamel yeah, like Terrell him. Miller. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Um, Anthony Joshua and, and um, Dante Wilder. Okay. Victor Ortiz, I like him too, though. Ortiz, Louis yeah. Ortiz. Yeah, Lewis Ortiz, yeah, I like him. You know what I'm saying? He can fight. Okay. That's pretty much it. So, heavily, I'm going to have to uh, do a little research on the wrestling 
receivers out there. <laughs> a lot of them guys' names ain't ringing out, man. I mean, you had a few guys. Like, I I, I watched a bunch of their fights. I, and like, like me and you talked about it. You got fighters and you got what you would call sparring partners. They got a lot of sparring mm-hmm. partners in today's heavyweight division. I got to say, man, a lot of guys just, just, just not even supposed to be out there fighting. They're just sparring partners. You know, and, yeah, and right. you know, one trick pony guys that don't even that ain't that that got good records because they beaten other sparring partners. They just happen to be better than the other sparring partner they fought. I think Mike Tyson and them had a good word for it back in the day. They called it the Bumba the Month Club. Remember that? When they had the Bumba the Month Club. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little taxi taxi uh taxi driver like, hey, you wanna make some money this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy, man. He's like he can knock somebody out. <laughs> I thought I put a couple thousand in your pocket right now. That would give him a thousand just to show up. And then make uh, a couple more thousand. Got a lot of they got I a lot of them. taxi cab drivers out there the spot uh, the yeah, boxing nowadays here. You hang you see you hang out in the gym, you'll see him in there. They probably train for about a good week or two, <laughs> and you get hit. He drop me. Give my check. <laughs> I mean, but but, but listen, t- talk to me Eddie, now. Let's let's segue into our, uh, our top box, top five boxes of all time, man. Talk to me about. There's a lot of them to mention, but that's, give me your top five of all time, your greatest fighters of all time. That's that's a difficult way to get there. There's so many years, man. I know. Oh, you got a Sugar Ray Leonard, um, Roy Jones Jr., James Tony, Muhammad Ali. Damn, there's so many of them, man. You got um, Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh, man. Tommy Hearn. That, damn, you just got so many Marvelous of them. Marvin, uh, Marvelous Marvin. Marvelous Marvin. Marvin Henry. Yeah. Hector Camacho. Yeah, Hector Camacho. I just seen his son too on um, Friday. He was at the uh, Powell's training. The Camachos, man. Yeah. It's a lot of good There's ones, though. There's a lot of great ones out there. But if I had to pin you to the wall and say you got to pick one, what's the number one greatest fighter of all time? The absolute picture of perfection of what a fighter is supposed to be. It don't matter what weight class. Who is the greatest, closest to perfect perfect fighter that ever existed? I would say say Mayweather. (laughs) Mayweather. Wow, that is perfection. That's a lot to say, saying that he topping guys like Sugar Ray Robinson and um, Sheesh. I mean, that's quite yeah, a few of them we didn't even mention. Yeah, I know they, they all had their time, but it's like he 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 um he gave a blueprint, man, to where like it should be no more broke fighters or damage fighters anymore, like brain damage as far as you know what I'm saying, as far as getting uh, brain damage and not being able to talk and, and um you know what I'm saying, not broke at the end of their careers, man. And then plus he dominated everybody. He dominated everybody that he fought. He said a whole nother blueprint, man. You know what I'm saying um, other guys, they they did great. They did a lot of great stuff, man. But they, a lot of them was broke after this one, but they couldn't even talk. That's true. That's why I have to say. That's why I have to say Mayweather. That's 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 he can talk. And he got money. <laughs> and he, and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He can still live the same lifestyle as if he was still fighting. Like, you know what I'm saying? Who you just say that did that, man? I can't say anybody did that. I mean, he went undefeated. Yeah. Right, know? and then think about the dudes that looked up some other guys, man. They they pretty much followed in their footsteps and the same thing happened to them. Now, he said a whole other blueprint, man. And these guys are like, okay, I'm going to take less punishment. I'm gonna invest my money. You know what I'm saying, dominate. You know what I'm saying, don't eat. I mean, I'll uh, eat right. No smoking, no drinking, and all that. And Mayweather did a whole lot for boxing, man. He did, Eddie. Well, that's that's uh, I, I appreciate you giving me the top five, bro. That's an awesome top five right there. That's gonna do the show, though, man. I thank y'all for listening to the Sports Coma. 
Big Q and the guy. I'd like to thank Eddie, as uh, Eddie, Too Mean Johnson for joining us on today's podcast. Remember, Eddie's going to pop up once a month to give us the latest information on all the favorite boxing that's going on out there. So big ups to him for coming true. Uh, for, as always, thank you for joining us on the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Thank you for joining us. Peace. You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. At the Posh Lifestyle, I go there for all my health needs. They offer great deals on organics, water filters, healing magnetics, healing crystals, clothing, books, DVDs, vitamins, and a lot more. They even have free shipping when you spend over $100 on most products. With secure online ordering, fast service, and great products, I save some money, and I'm improving my health doing it. It's a win-win. So do what I did. Go to shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. So upgrade your lifestyle with the Posh Lifestyle and...